So welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to explain what Risk Infrastructure Framework or RIF for short is. This one's been a trending altcoin right now for a variety of reasons. Going to go into that and do a bit of a TLDR on what this does as there's no other good videos on YouTube as yet. So let's jump into this video. If you enjoy it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. So RSK, Infrastructure Framework, ticker RIF. RSK stands for Rootstock. This is essentially the L2 environment for Bitcoin that they have created. This one's actually been created back in 2018. So it's been around for quite some time and a lot of development on this network, but it's kind of just getting its day in the sun. Now, as you can see from this, circulating supply is almost the full 1 billion tokens because this one actually raised around 15 to 20,000 Bitcoins for this token back in 2018 and those RIF tokens vested over a five year period. So it's almost fully vested out. And of course, that amount of Bitcoin they raised as well means this is a very well and heavily funded project. Market cap around 186 million dollars. So this one is to do with Bitcoin. Essentially, it's a Bitcoin infrastructure play similar to the likes of Stacks, which is on the list here, and a load of other protocols. A lot of these have been performing very well. With the emergence of ordinals for Bitcoin, people are starting to put two and two together and seeing that it is possible to build scaling solutions or protocols on top of the Bitcoin network. And so risk infrastructure is similar to Stacks in a way as it is its own L2 environment or a sidechain for Bitcoin and it leverages Bitcoin's security through a merge mine process, i.e. you can mine Bitcoin and also the risk infrastructure version of Bitcoin, our Bitcoin, at the same time. I'd also recommend going through some of these coins, doing some due diligence as well, as these could be big movers in the next cycle if we see continued adoption of these Bitcoin-based sidechains. So here we have RIF to Stacks, just a quick price comparison. It would be a 6x away for RIF to hit the market cap of Stacks currently, which is kind of the market leader out here right about now. Binance did a nice little summary article here. The Risk Infrastructure Framework, RAF, is an open and decentralized suite of infrastructure protocols that leverage smart contracts on top of the Bitcoin network to enable easier, faster, and scalable development of dApps. It is also the first open source smart contract secured by the Bitcoin network, as I say, secured via that merge mine process. So RIF and the RSK infrastructure, this is all just under one umbrella. Currently, they focused on the likes of DeFi application, storage, naming services, and payment solutions. They do have co-founders based in Latin America, so you can kind of see the need for stable coins backed by the security of the Bitcoin network could be very valuable in those kind of regions where they have hyperinflation. And they have a stablecoin protocol already called RDOC, an asset-backed stablecoin pegged to the US dollar. They've also got a token bridge allowing for interoperability between the RSK infrastructure and Ethereum's virtual machine. And from doing a bit of due diligence, they do have quite a bit built out so far, but it's not the finished article. It's not mass adoption ready as of yet, but hopefully that will come in the year of 2023 to 2024. So this is kind of the stack of it. So at the top here, you have the app users. They will plug into the variety of dApps being built on top of this network, RSK, those rootstock smart contracts. Then you have the APIs connecting a variety of different use cases here. As they say, directory, storage, payments, computing, messaging, that kind of stuff. And the protocol leverages Bitcoin via merge mining. The two token model here, RIF and an SBTC. So if you were to bridge your Bitcoin into this network to use their suite of applications, may it be DeFi or other, you would take your Bitcoins and then it would be sent to, I believe it's a multi-sig and you would receive RBTC. They call this the smart version of Bitcoin, pegged one-to-one. -one. Of course, there may be some risks inherent to that. And then this would essentially be the gas for that network. So Bitcoin as a gas token, another use case, pretty interesting stuff. And then you would use the RIF token to actually consume the services built on top of this infrastructure. So pay for things in RIF, but use SBTC as gas is what I'm getting getting from this. So they do seem to be motoring towards some form of big developments here that they're alluding to. Uh, this is a quick snippet from Tim here, one of the guys from Rootstock, letting you know his ideas for what could be big here in 2023 with Rootstock. So what is the main goal for Riff in 2023? I would be happy at the end of, uh, of this year if we would have the, um, the first success cases of fintechs, successful integrations of uh, Riff components by fintechs 
to bring decentralized finance to regular users, non-expert users. That would be a big success for me uh, because we need to do a lot of different things to achieve that, right? We may have to make the technology usable. We have to help fintechs to become profitable businesses. So essentially, they're looking forward to bringing DeFi applications to the masses on their network. So, so a BTC sidechain with DeFi applications live and kicking to the public is where they see this going. So these are some of the products they have live. Well, this one is not quite yet live. So they've deprecated the old wallet and they have a new wallet coming around Q2 of this year. It's going to be, you know, a better UI. It's going to have a lot of applications inbuilt into it. And you can join the waitlist directly from their website there. They also have RNS, a RIF name service service, i.e. ENS, but on this network. Those kind of things are typically very popular with businesses. You have human readable addresses instead of strings of alpha numeric data. Then scrolling down, we also have Riff Relay. So this allows you to actually move between EVM and the RSK network. So you can actually utilize ERC20 tokens to actually pay for transactions on this network. I believe they would then swap the ERC20 token into the SBTC to pay for gas, but this can be done without the user actually having to onboard directly into the ecosystem but use that ERC20 token so this is a relayer then we have the flyover down here as well the process by which you can port your Bitcoin into our Bitcoin for this network and then further down we have a DeFi gateway and also Riff aggregation as well and they do have a very timely buzzword of the month here ultra low cost by leveraging scaling power of zero knowledge proofs so here is the website for Rootstock. That is the EVM compatible smart contracts that they provide. You can see some key figures down here. So currently for a network, I didn't really know too much about more than about a few weeks ago. TVL, $83 million, pretty damn good. Merge mining average Bitcoin hash rate is 57%. That is a heck of a lot of hash rate and a lot of security for this network. The Bitcoin are locked in a two-way peg. BTC to RBTC, 3,496. And they currently have around 79, 80,000 transactions on the network this last month. So it would be very interesting to see these numbers all start to tick up over the coming weeks, months, and years ahead. Highly scalable, interoperable, fast transactions, deploy EVM compatible smart contracts on Rootstock and leverage the security of the Bitcoin network. So essentially this could mean that EVM dApps could port into this network and that would be something exciting to actually see here. If we do get a big name dApp port onto this network, you could then totally consider this as an alt L1 environment. And it already is, but without all the bells and whistles and the names that we're so used to. Imagine an Aave, a curve, etc. deploying to this network. This would obviously bring a load of liquidity liquidity to the network and also give it a lot of legitimacy as well. So these are the kind of things I will be looking for for this to actually take the next step. But you can see the building blocks are already in play for this one. This just then goes over most of the things we just spoke about. And to me, this really is a picks and shovels play for Bitcoin L2s. So the potentiality for NFTs on Bitcoin like ordinals, if that continues to take off, it would be a chain like this that I could see actually having a lot of the activity because they have the tooling available already and they also have lots of funding and developers actively working on this. There's a lot of ordinals projects out there that probably aren't going to get something great to market, but the likes of Rootstock here, Riff, all the likes of Stacks are likely homes for the true ordinals marketplaces. Then further down, they also have some of the dApps building on top of the network as well. They recently did an AMA with Sovereign down here, which is essentially a money market building on top of this network. So there will be value accrual when you have a lot of protocols deploying dApps to your network and Sovereign is one of those. So you could go and check out the AMA over on Twitter for that one. This is their first half of 2023 roadmap ahead. As you can see, new website, Twitter spaces, the AMA and the roadmap discussions. And then we have Q2. So this is the stuff to look forward to. Riff Wallet live on mainnet. The RNS short domain names live on mainnet as well. And a DeFi gateway live on mainnet. So these things are highly likely to bring a lot more adoption and traction on the network. And typically when a network is used a lot more, value is accrued and the numbers go up. But the top line there, Consensus 2023 major RAF announcement on stage. Consensus is around the 26th of April 2023. So I would stay tuned for that to see if there is a major announcement. Maybe one of the ideas I've alluded to here becoming true. Haven't been able to find any true alpha on that as of yet, but that's around seven weeks away from now. So there could be a price catalyst event there for the traders. On their website, there's a lot of reference towards sending money, you know, transacting with with US dollar stable coins and being able to swap from other currencies into stables, borrow, lend, and pay. 
all the types of use cases I would say are very much necessities for Latin America where some of this team is from. So those are the kind of products I expect we start to see them really hammer down. So Binance is the most liquid market for this token. That is the weekly chart there. The all-time high is around 46, 47 cents. And if you do want to get your hands on this token, check out Binance via the ref link down below. I'll save you 10% on your transaction fees via that affiliate link. You can see some attention here around July, then the end of November. And then more recently, three huge green candles here, which kind of suggests to me that people in the know have been able to fill some rather big bags of this token, as maybe they know there is something big on the horizon. It seemed to have formed a bit of a bottom out here and is now really chatting its way towards that 27 cent region. So there we have it, the TLDR on RSK infrastructure framework or RIF for short. This provides the toolkit for scalability of dApps onto a Bitcoin L2. EVM compatibility is definitely something of great interest. And so you can see that this could potentially be valued against other alternative layer ones, think Solana, Avalanche, etc., but with a much lower price tag. So if you enjoyed this one, smash a like on today's video, subscribe to the channel and drop me a nice comment down below, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.